Ellen had a lady on her show years ago. Her name was Gladys, and she was from Austin, Texas. She became a sensation with the quote of, I love Jesus, but I drink a little. It's really adorable, really funny, made a lot of people laugh. I love Gladys. She brings me joy. I had a very Mormon upbringing, drinking, drinking very off limits, among a lot of other things. And after a few major life changes, I decided that it was time for me to move away from the church. This meant that I needed to find my own personal code of truth. I needed to sort through what values from that upbringing do I still hold true to and what values no longer really ring true to me. What do I want to keep? What boxes do I want to stay in and what ones do I really want to let go? I hold no anger or malice or bitterness towards that church. In fact, I actively, I'm, I'm an open book. <laughs> you can ask me questions and I will, I will truthfully answer them with the knowledge that I have. And I actively encourage people to find an understanding. It seems like I've kind of found my niche in that aspect. One thing I decided that I wanted to explore a little bit, it had been such a forbidden space, was alcohol. I had this kind of negative judgmental attitude towards it because that's what I had been brought up with. And yet in the same aspect, I was very curious. Why was it such a negative thing? And why was it so forbidden? And yes, I had a little bit in high school. I don't know many people who didn't actually sneak a drink here and there when that opportunity came. And yet as an adult, to have the freedom of choice to explore it, it was a completely new frontier and I was really excited to play around with it. So my gateway was initially the tiki drinks, those sweet, fruity, mixed drinks that go down really easy, they don't burn, and they're just fun. And I liked how free and open I felt. My filter was kind of gone, and I felt way more relaxed around people, and I didn't hide myself quite so much, and that was the effect of the alcohol. After a while, I branched out to wines, and I loved the bubbly, sweeter white wines. And then I learned about cheese pairings and a little bit of a dry red with a cheese. My mind was blown with the way that the dry red would play with a creamy cheese. And that whole phrase, you want a little cheese with your wine? <laughs> Absolutely, let's play around with it. I had a lot of fun. And then, you know, 10 years into it, I discovered other liqueurs, and I discovered whiskey and flavored whiskey, and it was really fun to play around with it. And yes, 10 years. That's how rarely I drank. I didn't drink that often, and when I did, it was often just socially. It was this, we're getting together, it's just normal, we're just going to grab a couple drinks, and it was fun. Last year, I realized that I had joined the throng of people who had ooh, slowly increased their drinking over the course of the pandemic. And it wasn't that I was drinking every single night, but I was definitely drinking more nights than not. And often it was more than one drink. Initially, I didn't really think anything of it. It was just, you're just drinking. But on the side, I began experiencing migraines and they were coming more often, more frequently, and it was really difficult. So I ended up going on a preventative. And then my digestion was off and I was really miserable and uncomfortable. And I'm already a vegetarian because I can't digest meat. And giving up alcohol just initially felt like another, ugh, really, I just, I'm missing out on something fun. And I didn't really want to do that, but my husband suspected that alcohol might be playing a part in my di digestive issues. So I had gone on a probiotic and I had gone on some digestive enzymes to try to help me be okay and level out. And on the one hand, they were working, but it meant that my pile of pills and supplements was just growing because of what I was putting into my body and doing. So I decided to give up alcohol. I decided to be a non-drinker and see how that worked. And in the beginning, it was awkward. The responses ranged anywhere from, what? Why? Really? That's okay. Well, whatever. To nonchalant, don't really care, not a big deal. I did have to put in boundaries. I keep, that seems to be a big 
thing in life right now is just the boundaries because when you are the only one not drinking and everyone else around you is drinking, there can be this assumption that you will just be the designated driver. So I had to put boundaries around, yeah, just because I'm dry doesn't mean I want to be the driver. Sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. I learned how to pick a drink that was a mocktail, not alcoholic, and yet still let me participate in the fun atmosphere. And it looked like I was drinking, even though it was just some kind of fruit juice with Sprite or whatnot. Shirley Temples are fun. So I had to shift that and change that. And you know what? After a month, I went off of the digestive enzymes and the probiotics, and I haven't needed them since. I was coming up on the end of my migraine preventative and decided to test the waters and see what'll happen. And I haven't looked back and I haven't had a migraine since. I also noticed that my outlook was shifting and my energy was returning and the clouds were parting and I was inspired again and I felt more excited to write and be an active part in things. I've heard that alcohol was a depressant. I've known this for a really long time. And yet I really didn't think that I was having enough to really be affecting me in that way. And yet it was. It was there. So I grew up being told that it was wrong. And it was one of those rules that was kind of like the because I said so rules. One of those rules that really kind of pisses you off because because I said so is just frustrating. It's just annoying. So you need to test that box. You need to see where is that boundary for yourself. So you go out, you have a little fun, you see where you're at, you see where the boundary is, and then eventually you come back to your own balance. And maybe the rule isn't the same as what you had been taught. You've shifted the rule a little bit, but now it's your own rule. So I've decided I'm done with alcohol. I feel so much better without it. I feel so much clearer without it. It's now been four months, five months, six months. I don't even know anymore. No, that's not true. November. The first of November is when I stopped. And I feel fantastic. I feel great. I don't want to go back. So now instead of a rule, it's a choice. I took that box off the shelf. I unwrapped it. And I wore that like a comfy pair of sweats that you wear until it has so many holes in it, you have to throw it away. So I had to let go of my comfy sweats, and yet I am so much more comfortable in my new pair of sweats because I got to choose it. I got to actively embrace it and say, this is my rule, not because they said so, but because I said so. I bucked against the system. I explored it a little bit, and then I created it as my own rule, my own truth, my own acceptance of where I want to be at and what I want to do. Have you ever bucked against a rule only to discover that it's actually something you want to embrace and you want it to be a part of your own thing? And how can a shift in perspective about a specific guideline help to shift your own personal energy and excitement? As a side note, since writing this musing, I've had multiple people talk to me and kind of slyly say, oh man, I think I need to give up alcohol. And they don't know that I have. So I let them know, well, I have, and my digestion's better. I don't have my migraines and I'm feeling a lot better. So for my own health, I think it's great. And they push their drink off to the side and they don't drink anymore. I do want to say this. You do not have to be an addict to give something up. Once you recognize that something is not serving you, is maybe harming you a little bit better than it is helping you, it's great to reevaluate what you're doing and what direction you want to go. In this instance, it's alcohol for me. I wasn't necessarily an alcoholic, and yet I recognized that it wasn't serving me and decided to test and see if it was better for me and my body and my being to let it go. There are lots of things throughout life where we might come up against that. 
In the same aspect, there are a lot of things that we can be addicted to. And if you are addicted, whether it's drugs, alcohol, or other things, I strongly encourage you to find the help that you need to live a better life, to break that addiction and be able to feel free and find joy and part those clouds in your life. We do have links to resources in the description of this video below, and I really sincerely hope that you find the help that you need if that is where you're at. I'm not the only one. There are a lot of people that are finding that things are just brighter and clearer without that added something. So I encourage you to buck against the system. I encourage you to test those rules. I encourage you to find out what works for you. And it might be that you find that old rule is a new rule, but with a new perspective and you're excited to embrace where you're at.